I've spent the past month going back and forth between the M3 and the M3 Pro MacBook Pros, and I am stumped. So in this video, we're going to discuss why you might be making a mistake buying the base M3 MacBook Pro, but why you also should not be paying extra for RAM upgrades. It's kind of confusing, so hopefully this video helps you, you know, clear things up and also helps you understand which M3 MacBook Pro you should buy. Let's start with the design because the introduction of the base M3 MacBook Pro led to the demise of the previous entry-level MacBook Pro, which was the 13-inch model with the touch bar. And now the new entry-level Pro MacBook from Apple comes with a more modern boxy design with the beautiful 14.2-inch liquid retina mini LED display with that glorious 120 hertz refresh rate along with the slimmed down bezel. And the display is nearly identical to the previous M1 and M2 Pro MacBook Pros, except for the fact that the brightness is now 100 nits higher at 600 nits of peak brightness for SDR content. And of course, all of the M3 MacBook Pros have the same display this time. However, the first big downside with the base model M3 compared to the M3 Pro is the lack of ports. We only have two USB-C ports on the base M3 MacBook MacBook Pro. And I'm somebody who runs my Final Cut Pro projects from an external SSD, which means that one of those spots is always going to be taken when I'm working from my MacBook Pro. Now, if I also have my device hooked up to an external display, well, there you go. Now both my ports are completely taken. And if you're like me, when you're at home, you are always hooked up to an external display. But if you're not, and if you're in the market for a new external display, today's sponsor BenQ makes one of the best monitors in its price range. This is their 27 inch 4K designer monitor, which offers seamless Mac integration with a single USB-C cable that also powers your MacBook at 90 watts. And thanks to their AQ color technology, the picture that you get from this monitor is excellent. We have the industry standard 95% color gamut with P3 support, along with Delta E values less than three straight out of the box. And basically that just means extremely accurate colors. And they even give you this paper in the box showing what your specific monitor tested at. But my favorite thing about this monitor is the aesthetic. This thing just looks so clean and so good on the desk and it's super simple to set up as well and it's all thanks to the ergo arm stand on the back. This thing just clamps down onto your desk. It has built-in cable management and it gives you all of the viewing flexibility that your heart would desire. We do also get a second gen hotkey puck in the box which allows you to switch between multiple devices easily with the built-in KVM switch. So if you're in the market for a a new monitor, I do not think you can go wrong with this 27 inch BenQ designer monitor, especially when you can get it for under $600 if you use my code linked down in the description below. So if you wanna pick one up for yourself, be sure to hit that link down in the description below and also be sure to use the code to get that price under 600 bucks. So with all that being said, the ports are not the only thing that the M3 has less of than the M3 Pro. We also have less fans inside. So the base M3 only has one fan inside to cool it down, whereas the M3 Pro has two fans inside. Now I have not had to deal with any type of thermal throttling or anything even remotely close to that. So this is not going to be a big deal to the majority of people, but it is good to keep in mind if you are planning to push your MacBook to extremes, especially if you plan on having it for a very long time. Now also the base M3 only allows you to have a single display output. So you can only display to one external monitor at up to 6K at 60 Hertz. Whereas on the M3 Pro, you can hook up two external displays up to 8K at 60 Hertz. So me personally, I work off of a dual monitor setup, so that instantly eliminates the M3 from something I would actually use on a day-to-day -day basis because I need my two displays up there. But if that's not a deal breaker for you, the performance between these two might be. Look, I work in Final Cut Pro, I work in Lightroom, I work in Photoshop, I work in Audacity, I work on a lot of creative applications, really heavy applications, and I've not had a single issue with the base M3 machine, despite only having eight gigabytes of RAM. And I actually compared the M3 to the M3 Pro when under extreme load, and both of them went into memory swap, 
but you know, they both performed nearly identical despite that. So you can see here, the task was exporting a two hour long 4K video with a Lightroom project opened and working on it, along with rapidly going through several Google Chrome tabs because Google Chrome doesn't run as good on the Mac. So I was really trying to push both of these computers and they performed pretty much the same. I mean, there was hardly no difference between the two. And this was sustained for over an hour I was doing tests like this. And keep in mind, this is an extreme test, something that most people are not even going to ever do in the life of their MacBook Pro. So for me personally, with the work that I do, which is photo editing, video editing, and you know potentially even more Google Chrome, all that, eight gigabytes of RAM, is enough for me for 99.9% .9 of the time. However, with that being said, don't go buying that you know base model M3 just yet because I don't think you should buy the base model M3 MacBook Pro, but I also don't think that you should upgrade the RAM, and I also don't think that you should buy the M3 Pro MacBook Pro from Apple. And that's because Amazon is selling the M3 Pro MacBook Pro in the new space black color for $17.99. That is just $200 more than the base M3 MacBook Pro and the same price if you were to spec up the base M3 to 16 gigs of RAM. And of course, with the M3 Pro, you get 18 gigabytes of RAM compared to 16 if you were to spec up the base M3, along with three extra CPU cores, four extra GPU cores, and the new space black color. The only advantage that the M3 has over the M3 Pro is gonna be in battery life. And this is something that I've noticed a bigger difference than I expected over the past month. And I thought the first week, the first couple of weeks were an anomaly, but I've noticed I got like at least four additional hours out of the M3 compared to the M3 Pro. And I know it seems ridiculous. I mean, Apple rates it for just three hours longer, but I've noticed like on average, three and a half to four hours consistently on the M3. I get longer battery life on the M3 compared to the M3 Pro. And that could be a big deal for a lot of people. Like if you're always on the go and you're traveling a lot, you may not always have access to a charger. So that's something you also have to take into account here. But all in all, I do think that you should avoid buying the base model M3 MacBook Pro but not just because of the eight gigabytes of RAM. I personally think that that is the least of the deal breakers, you know, with this model compared to the M3 Pro. So I never had any issues again with the eight gigs of RAM compared to 16 or 18, but you know, I think there are four reasons that I will be returning the base M3. Reason number one is the fact that we can only hook up one external monitor with the M3 compared to two with the M3 Pro. Number two is the fact that we only have one fan in the M3 compared to two fans in the M3 Pro. This isn't a huge deal, but like I mentioned earlier for longevity and when you're doing those intensive tasks, this is going to help cool down the MacBook and just keep it healthy over time. Number three is the fact that we do not have the space black option for the base M3. You only get that with the M3 Pro and Max. And then of course, number four is the price, especially when you take into account the Amazon prices compared to the Apple prices. And I do also wanna mention that Apple does sell the base M3 MacBook Pro on Amazon as well for $1,450, making the price difference $350 between the two, as opposed to $400 if you were to buy through Apple. But honestly, if you're looking for a deal on a base MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of RAM, you honestly probably would be better off just waiting for the M3 MacBook Air because if you're only looking for the base model device and you're just you know wanting to get the cheapest price, the best deal, you probably don't need all the power that a MacBook Pro in general has. So for you, I would say to just wait for the new MacBook Air coming next year. However, if you currently have an M2 MacBook Pro or a higher spec M1 Pro or M1 Max MacBook Pro, I personally think that you should skip the M3. I just don't think it's worth it to upgrade to any of the M3 MacBook Pros because you're not gonna really see a big difference in performance or even battery life for that matter. So I think the only reason you should do it is if you're trying to minimize your losses because you gotta think that next year, you know, when a new MacBook Pro comes out, the value of your M1 MacBook Pro is just gonna go down even further. Even M2 is gonna go down even further. So that's one thing to keep in mind and that's why I personally will be trading in, I will be selling, I should say, my M1 Max MacBook Pro. The absolute beast, I'm gonna be selling that and using that money to put towards an M3 Pro 
MacBook Pro in space black, this same one right here. But of course I will be returning this and getting it off of Amazon for $200 cheaper. So yeah, that is my experience with the M3 and the M3 Pro MacBook Pros. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe for a lot more Mac coverage just like this. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.